Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about a really important topic that all 9th and 10th graders specifically should be aware of. I'm going to use an example four-year class schedule plan to show you how decisions that you make, especially in the 9th grade and 10th grade year, and specifically whether you pass classes or not, how that can impact your 10th grade year, your 11th grade year, and your senior year. So this is really geared to those 9th and 10th graders who are pretty new to the high school, don't really know exactly how credits work and how things that happen now can affect later. This is going to be a good visual for you guys to understand and I'll give you some examples and hopefully it will open a few eyes. Okay, so here's the example for your class schedule plan that I was talking about. Please take a look at all four colored areas. So this yellow area would be an example of a ninth grade schedule. The blue area is an example of a 10th grade schedule. Green, 11th grade, and red, 12th grade. Now, disclaimer, this is an example plan. This is not how every student is going to look, but this includes all the required core credits and elective credits that counselors have to make sure that students have before they graduate. So let's take a look at ninth grade real quick. So you'll see it's broken down into periods. You have eight periods or eight class periods over the A and B block. Semester one here, semester two. And in this case, you've got student taking geometry all year, both semesters, English nine, both semesters, NGSS physics, both semesters. You're gonna have a global history class one semester, a health class the next. You're going to have CCR9 or AVID, Lifetime Fitness is PE, and then some electives each semester. And those are going to be dependent on uh, what you either forecasted for, what you want, or what you got. And those are all going to be required credits for the ninth grade year. Now, if you look at 10th grade year, you've got a lot of similarities there, but there are some differences. So, for example, you still have math all year, English all year science all year, a history, and we recommend PE for this, uh, for this year, but it's optional. You've got to take at least one more PE class before you graduate. And there's those electives again. But notice here, there's these off periods. Now, if a 10th grader's on track, that means has all their credit from freshman year or ninth grade year, you can have at least one of those semesters or both off one period. So that means you have seven out of eight classes. Notice how 11th grade is similar. So you've got math, English, science, history, you have government and health again, some electives, and now you have up to two off periods per semester if you're on track and you have those credits. Senior year is crazy. So you've got English all year, a global studies, and an econ class, a few electives to round out your day. And notice how many off periods a senior can have depending on if they have all the credit that they that they need at that point. So let me talk to ninth graders specifically and 10th graders. If you end up not passing a class or in some cases more than one class, look how it impacts your schedule. So I'm going to play a scenario out here. I'm going to talk about maybe not passing one class and then how that impacts your schedule versus not passing, let's say, four or five classes and how that impacts your schedule in future. So let's start with one. So let's take a look at, let's say, global history. Let's say you're just struggling in global history and you don't pass that particular class. So we're going to strike through it. So how does that impact your schedule moving forward? It's not a huge impact, although it will be probably frustrating for you. But most likely, we're going to take away an elective here the next semester, and we're going to go ahead and make you take global history again. We want to make sure you get that credit right away. And where does that elective go? It just doesn't disappear like I erased it there. It's going to go into your 10th grade year, and we're going to go down to this off period, and we're going to take that away, and now you're going to have that elective. So right away, when you don't pass a class first semester, we're going to put it, in this case, second semester so you get it done. 
And that bumps the elective over to an off period that you would have had potentially next year. So that's how one failed class this semester can impact 10th grade next, next year, first semester. So that's one example of how one class will move everything over. Let's look at something more drastic. Let's say you failed another elective here. And let's say you failed science. And let's say you failed English. Okay. So you failed four out of eight classes. You just had a rough start. Okay. So let's look at this. So you failed this elective. It's got to come over here. And we're going to put it in here. All right, you failed NGSS physics. We can't really stuff NGSS physics in over here. So we're going to have to bump that all the way to your off period, your junior year. And we're going to make you take an additional science class. It's not going to be NGSS physics per se, but it's going to be another science class. And let's look at English 9. So English 9 may have an option where you can take an English 9A, which basically repeats the first semester. In that case, we might give it to you second semester. So that bumps out an elective. So let's say you take English 9A along with English 9B. So you're doubled up in English now. Where does this elective go? Well, this is already full over here. So we've got to go back here to junior year and we can either put it here and round out your day. So now you have no off periods 10th and 11th grade first semester, or maybe we could put it over here, you know, and give you one off period. And that's assuming you pass everything 10th grade year to maintain the off period over here. That's an example of how four classes not passed your ninth grade semester one year impact 10th grade and 11th grade. We haven't even gotten to semester two yet, guys. So if you make more mistakes here in semester two, let's say, let's say you improve, so you pass everything else second semester except health. Well, health has to go over here, and we've got to put it here to get you back in it. And that elective period now goes here. Now, it could bump over to here. Now, again, this is just an example. So all these off periods over here, maybe we can balance these out. So some of these electives can move to your senior year, right? And so you can have an off period or two here, but you have less as a senior. So that impacts your senior year. So you're not even out of your ninth grade year. You've already filled up your 10th grade year. And you're working on filling up your 11th grade year or balancing out into 11th and 12th grade. Okay, that's how this works. There are some credit recovery opportunities like summer school, for example, but we don't do summer school for ninth graders and 10th graders don't usually get in either. Summer school is usually a senior or a junior only um, position for kids that have already filled up their day, no off periods, and they still need credit and so those seats are saved for those specific cases. So I hope this helps you guys understand visually how if you don't pass a class or several classes, your, your ninth or 10th grade year, how it shifts and moves everything over. And it really impacts one to two to three years away. Um, and I can tell you there's a big difference in attitude about things in life like school. Um, from the time you're 14 and 15 to 17 and 18. You will not be a, a very happy with yourself uh, if you're a freshman failing classes when you're 17, 18 years old. So if you can do something about this now, and you can, do it. Do whatever you can. Get the help you need from your teachers. Come to your counselors. Let's, let's take care of this stuff now for those of you who I'm talking to so that you don't have to shift and move and worry about two to three years out and whether or not you're going to graduate or whether you're going to have off campuses and all that good stuff. Okay, I hope this was informative and if you have questions, please see your counselor and there'll be more videos with more credit um, and transcript talks coming soon.